Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about how to use date parameters in Oracle BI Publisher data model and reports. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Arun. I make videos on Oracle ERP Cloud, EPM integrations and analytics. If you're interested in learning more about these topics, make sure to subscribe to the channel and it helps the channel a lot and also encourages me to make more videos and content like this. So today, it's a continuation of our BA Publisher tutorial series. We're gonna take a look at how to use date parameters in the data model. Let's get into it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and create a data model. Make sure that FSCM is selected, go to data sets. Before I do that, let me show you the SQL queries that we're going to use. So here's one. We're gonna select uh, certain columns from the AP invoices all table, and we're gonna uh, have a condition um, for the invoice date column. So we are going to select invoices that were um, that has an invoice date before a certain date. So we're going to use a bind variable called ptrx to date. And the idea is the user is able to select a date and we will show all the transactions uh, with an invoice date that is uh, before the selected date. Uh, by the user. All right, so let me copy this, create a new data set, name it transactions, paste it here, and click OK. And when you click OK, because we have a bind variable, the system is going to prompt you to create a parameter. So select the bind variable, click on OK. So here's the name of the parameter, the data type, and we want the user to select uh, date. So we're going to change the data type to date. Um, and the bottom section gives you more options. So let's change the display label to, to date. Right. So click on save. And we will call this as uh, date parameters. Okay. All right. Let's go to view data. Select the date. I'm going to select August 31st of the date. Click on OK. Let's change this to 10 rows. Click on View. Table View. You can see that it shows you invoices where invoice date is uh, less than 831. So 828, 27, 26, so on and so forth. Uh, we can change this to, let's say, 827. Click on View. And you should see invoices that were that has um, date of um, eight twenty six or less, right? So anything that's less than eight twenty seven. All right, that's one use case. Now let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's go ahead and give the user to select a date range, so a from date and a to date. So let me show you the query. So here the difference in the query is we have two bind variables. So you have a from date and a to date, and we are checking if the invoice date is between those two dates, right? So invoice date is between uh, from date and to date. So let me copy this, edit the data set, and paste the query, click on OK, and it's gonna prompt us to create the new parameter for the new bind variable, which was the PTRX from date. So select the bind variable, click on OK, and let's go ahead and change the data type to date and change the display label to from date. All right. Click on view data. And here you can see the from date parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and select August as 20. Uh, let's say 24, click on OK, let's change this to 50, click on View. And you can see that now we have invoices that are um, either uh, having a date of 824 or any invoices that are between 824 and 827, right? Um, keep in mind that the between clause or the between function um, is inclusive of both the ranges. So uh, if I select 824 and 827, 
it will show you all invoices where the date falls between 24 and 27, but also invoices with the date of 824 and 827. So it is inclusive of the lower and the upper limit. All right, so this is how we can use the date parameters to give a range and then have the user select a range and then uh, restrict the data based on that range. Uh, let's see some other tricks that we can do. So here, if you go and select the two date, you can see that I can go and select December 28th or December 31st, right? And you know, it'll still allow you to select that data. Now, I don't want the user to do that, let's say. What I want is a user to be able to select the maximum date to be today's date. I don't want any, any date beyond today's date to be available or, or you know, the user should be, shouldn't be able to select the date beyond today's. So how can we control that? So we have an option here. You will see two options, date from and date to. This allows you to control the dates that are available for selection by the user. So I'm gonna control what's available um, for the user to select as the um, latest date, right? So how you do this is you put curly braces in between curly braces dollar dollar and between the dollars you type in sysdate. So here you can see we have curly braces dollar dollar sysdate um, as a function. So this allows you to control what's the latest date that's available for the user to select. Now let's save this, go back to view data and let's see if you're able to select a date of 26. So here you can see that I'm unable to select the date. Um, day is not selected, you can see that um, in validate format. Now let's go ahead and change this to, let's see, October. I'm able to select 23, uh, right? Which is, although my date, Eastern time zone, it's 1023, but the server date is 1024. Uh, I can select 2024, yeah. I cannot select 1025 because based on the server date, um, today's date is 1024. So anything beyond that is is shown in the calendar, but it is not um, available for selection. When I say un unavailable for selection, it just means that um, I cannot select it and click OK to pass that as a valid date value. Okay, so that's how you can control what date, date um, dates are available for the user to select. Here, for the from date, I could restrict, okay, the maximum that you can select is sysdate minus uh, seven, sysdate minus one. So basically I want restricting the user saying that, hey, the from date is, you know, that the latest date that you can select is one day before today's date, all right? So let's select that, go back, view data. Here I can try to select October. Let's try, I can select 25, it's not available. 24, not available. 23 is available, right? So I've restricted the from date. The latest date that the user can select is uh, one day before today's date. All right, so that, that's how you can control what date is, dates are available for the user to select from. Uh, the thing I wanted to show is you can default the value here. So I could default uh, the value for um, from date and to date. Uh, so from date would be uh, seven days before today's date and to date would be today's date. So I'm going to save this, um, go back into the catalog. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for refresh and I'm going to come back into the data model. Let's go into data. And here you can see that the from date is defaulted to sysdate minus seven, and the to date is defaulted to 1024, 2024, which is today's date based on the server date. Hopefully you learn uh, at a high level how to use date parameters in the data model, as well as the BI Publisher reports. Uh, if you have questions uh, on this video, make sure to post them in the comment section. Uh, you can also connect with me on LinkedIn and ask any questions there. 
Um, I'm currently working on a masterclass for BA Publisher drill down options. Uh, you may know that OTBI has drill down option. It's pretty easy to configure drill down in OTBI, but many people don't know how to do this in BA Publisher. So this course will be available pretty soon and I'm very excited to publish this uh, course. Uh, so watch out for an announcement coming out soon. The first uh, 10 students will get a 50% discount on the course, but I'll let you know when it is available for uh, you to purchase. As always, your feedback is welcome and connect with me on LinkedIn and make sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. I'll see you in the next one.